Gustavus Adolphus was the king of Sweden from 1611 until 1632. He is often regarded as one of the greatest military leaders of all time. Some historians have called him the father of modern warfare for his military innovations on the battlefield. He is also the only Swedish monarch to be styled the Great. As a child growing up as the son of King Charles IX of Sweden, Gustavus was given an excellent education in the lessons of governance. His given tutors were among the best that Sweden had to offer. Still a child, Gustavus became fluent in five languages and performed functionally well in five others. He had an enormous appetite for learning, excelling in history, literature, and science. Gustavus became well known for debating nobles, as well as visiting ambassadors and aristocrats. By the time Gustavus was 15, he grew increasingly interested in military affairs. He had spent time among some world-class military officers, for which he had learned many things that would characterize his future reign as king. In early 1611, Denmark invaded Sweden's southeastern coast, captured the city of Kalmar, and captured or destroyed many other towns. Soon afterwards, at the age of 16, Gustavus was knighted and led his first military expedition against the Danish attackers. He quickly recaptured an island that lay directly opposite of Kalmar and destroyed an occupied town by deceiving the defending troops by outfitting his soldiers in the uniform of the enemy. A few other actions were successful against the Danes in the months to come. By the fall of that year, his father King Charles IX died. Gustavus became king and commander-in-chief at the age of 16. King Christian of Denmark saw an opportunity to end the war quickly from the death of Charles and attempted to conquer Sweden's capital of Stockholm in 1612. Gustavus rushed his much smaller army to Stockholm before the Danes reached the city. He put every available civilian man in the city in uniform to make it appear he had a much larger army defending the city. The tactic worked, as the Danes withdrew from ever attacking Stockholm, not knowing that most of the defenders were untrained civilians. Peace was concluded in 1613, with Denmark unable to defeat the Swedish entirely. As Sweden was not forced to give up any territory, Gustavus had saved Sweden from what had been a costly and devastating defeat. As king, Gustavus's military innovations and revolutionary developments in warfare laid the foundations of military practices for the next two centuries after his death. In the years before Gustavus's reign of King of Sweden, European armies were largely conscripted soldiers or large numbers of foreign mercenaries hired just before marching to battle. After the wars, these conscripts and soldiers for hire were quickly mustered out of the army until their next order of battle. Gustavus changed all of that by having a regular standing army that was well trained, well drilled, armed with fine weapons, and that were paid on time. He used Swedes as officers and soldiers, creating a true national army. When he did use mercenaries, he made sure they were trained in the Swedish ways of war. As a general, Gustavus is famous for employing mobile artillery on the battlefield, disregarding the big, cumbersome cannons favored by many leaders of his day. He opted for lighter and maneuverable field pieces that could be quickly moved to give fire where his infantry needed support at a particular time. He was a great innovator in the field of combined arms, for which he deployed his musketeers in with traditional pike formations. He featured one pike for every few muskets. This grouping was enough to keep enemy cavalry from decimating the infantry, but also plenty of offensive firepower at the same time. With this, he disregarded traditional pike squares common in European formations of the time. Another important innovation was cross-training, in which infantry and cavalry units were also trained to fire artillery. Pikemen could load and fire a musket, and artillery and infantry soldiers could ride a horse. All of his innovations were realized in the single biggest battle of his career, the Battle of Breitenfield, that took place in 1631 during the Thirty Years' War. The Thirty Years' War of 1618-1648 to 1648 was primarily a war between various Protestant and Catholic states in the fragmented Holy Roman Empire. 
Sweden entered the war allied with the Protestant cause. The Swedish army was joined by an allied German force for the battle. In this battle, Gustavus's innovative strategy of stressing attack over defense and mobility over static lines were employed. Combined forces of light, heavy infantry mixed with pikemen formed his defense against enemy cavalry attacks. Light, mobile artillery was used to provide offense and defense against a changing battlefield. His opponent, the Count of Tilly, commander of the Catholic League, deployed his forces in the traditional European static and cumbersome formations of heavy infantry and pikemen. There was no combined arms, as his musketeers were deployed by themselves in their own units. His heavy cannons were in static positions in front, unable to provide cover to shifting lines of attack. On September 17th, the battle began around midday with a two-hour exchange of artillery fire. The Swedes demonstrated a rate of fire of three to five volleys per one imperial volley. The Catholic League Forces Cavalry next charged the Swedish lines a total of six times, but each time it was stopped by the combination of musket and cannon fire from Gustavus's forces. At this time, Gustavus released his own cavalry to charge the enemy attackers before their next attack. The Count of Tilly's already weakened cavalry retreated and left the battlefield. Seeking a change in fortune, the Count of Tilly ordered his remaining infantry and cavalry to attack the Swedes' left flank. However, due to his innovations and mobility, the Swedish king's forces could easily change lines and artillery placement to meet the new advance. The Count's forces were soon under heavy bombardment and musket fire. Also now that the Swedish right flank was now unopposed, Gustavus personally led them and charged into the enemy artillery positions and captured them. Being cross-trained with different weapons, his forces began using the enemy's own artillery against them. Now engaged on multiple fronts with overwhelming firepower against them, the Count of Tilly's forces retreated. The Catholic League suffered over 24,000 casualties, compared to 5,500 for the Swedish alliance. It was the first major victory for Protestant forces since the beginning of the war 13 years earlier. The totality of the victory confirmed Gustavus's military innovations and convinced many other neighboring states to join the Swedish side. In November 1632, at the Battle of Lutzen, Gustavus was killed in battle when he became accidentally separated from his cavalry during a charge and was shot to death near enemy lines. The Swedish forces still won the battle, but soon the Protestant cause during the war lost needed leadership from their most important commander. Catholic forces were able to restore balance before the war ended in 1648. The domestic and military reforms of Gustavus allowed Sweden to rise from the status of a mere regional power to one of the great powers of Europe and a model of early modern era government. <laughs>